Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Anna and I'm a little bit spooky. Today we're having some coffee and we are doing a makeup tag. This is the makeup journey tag. Uh, my friend Donna did this one uh, about a week ago and I was like, you know, I like those questions. I kind of want to do this one too. And here we are. While I answer the questions, I will be doing this makeup look. This is very much inspired by the Charlotte Silbury Pillow Talk lipstick and that kind of vibe. I'm wearing Pillow Talk lippy today. And I kind of wanted to do something that looked like it was came from one of the quads, one of the uh, Pillow Talk quads that I don't have. But what I do have is the Blush Crush palette from ColourPop. And this palette just really gives me Pillow Talk vibes. And we also use the Pillow Talk eyeliner. And yeah, just do some makeup. So if that interests you and want to hear my answers to the makeup journey tag, just go ahead and keep on watching. But before you do, don't forget to like and subscribe, comment down below. Let me know some more tags you would like to see me do. I don't even know where to look for all these tags and <laughs> there's so many, I get a little overwhelmed. So let me know your favorite tags down below and yeah, I would like to do them. Let's go ahead and get into this coffee, makeup, and chit chat. Why did I say chit chat? I hate that word. I hate that little phrase. Ew. <laughs> Let's get into this coffee, makeup, and tag video. <laughs> okay, I hope you have a cup of coffee because I do. <laughs> and it's like 10 o'clock at night. Who cares? What is time anyway? So today we're going to do a coffee and makeup and we're going to do the makeup journey tag, which uh, my friend Donna did the other day, my new obsession. I'll link her video in the eye. I think Annette's Makeup Corner's done this tag, Smoky Glow, a few others. I, I don't know, a lot of people have done this one. But I like the questions. I thought it'd be kind of fun to do that while I put on some makeup. And for my eyeshadow today, I want to use the Blush Crush from ColourPop. Uh, this this little palette gives me kind of Pillow Talk vibes. You know, like Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. So I kind of want to do something that would look like it came out of one of the little Pillow Talk quads. And I think this, this palette kind of falls into that with the, the blushy tones and everything. So yeah, we're just gonna do a pretty look and go through the uh, makeup journey tag. I've already primed my eyes. Brows are on, obviously. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump in initially with the shade Love Sick. And I'm gonna hit the brow bone with it. And I guess we should go ahead and go jump into our first question, which is, how old were you when you first started wearing makeup? I was about probably 12, 13, around that age when I started like leave the house in makeup. I was like sixth grade, junior high. And junior high is really when I started to actually wear it to school on a regular basis, like do a little bit of concealer. My mom didn't let me like do full on foundation or anything like that, but she let me do like, you know, mascara, a little bit of eyeliner. Well, she didn't really like me wearing eyeliner for some reason, it was a little battle. But she let me wear mascara and a little bit of eyeshadow. And I just kind of started teaching myself, particularly eighth grade, I think I was about 14. I really got into makeup. And like started, this was before makeup tutorials on YouTube. So you had to kind of read magazines to learn how to do makeup or have like, a, you know, a book. So I used to just cut out clippings from uh, like Cosmo Girl and Cosmopolitan even, or my mom's, you know, fashion magazines. And I would made a little folder of them and I would go through them and try to recreate the looks and like learn how to do a smoky eye and stuff like that. I was just immediately kind of like obsessed with like doing look, you know, full on makeup. And yeah, I just sat there and like studied it. <laughs> Basically, you know, like a lot of probably kids or 14 year olds do now, you know, you watch the YouTube video and try to recreate it. I was recreating it from just what I saw in magazines and a little bit of watching like QVC and like infomercials of them you know, do it in testing products and like Alexis Vogel infomercials. I remember those and trying to recreate it, that look, and just recreating what I would see on celebrities that I liked and stuff like that. Uh, so that's kind of really how when I started really, really wearing makeup, I started playing with makeup. Oh my goodness, I was probably like four or five. Um, my mom would give me like her old stuff to play with. And I would sit there and just like, you know, put it on. Not to toot my horn, but I had like a natural kind of talent for it. Like I understood like the placement and stuff because I was really, I don't know, like artistic. I was into art, understood shade and light and all that. And it was just kind of something a little bit effortless for me to learn to do. It wasn't, uh, and I really struggled with it. And I just loved trying to learn new techniques. That was the biggest thing I remember, like particularly like that summer before eighth grade. 
just scouring magazines, tearing pages out, and practicing over and over and over on myself every day. Why, like, the first thing I would do when I get to a store is go straight to the makeup section and look at it and, you know, and try to get my mom to buy me everything. <laughs> I would just sit in my room for hours playing with makeup. Like, not much has changed, obviously, I just do it on film now. <laughs> And before I did it on film, I did it in blog posts. <laughs> so it's always been an obsession. Very early age that I took an interest in makeup. Uh, I remember watching like Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar, and that just was one of those pivotal movies to me. And just seeing that level of glam, it kind of changed my brain as a child, seeing that movie and just seeing this whole other world that was so different from where I lived. And makeup was a big part of it. And I just fell in love with everything glamour and high fashion. I would love watching runway shows when I was a kid and looking at their makeup and always uh, want to be a makeup artist and to play makeup as long as I can remember. That was probably my, my first obsession and still is my obsession. And I, yeah, I can remember being like three years old watching stuff on TV and just being like, Makeup is so gorgeous. I want to do that. I loved watching any type of show that had like crazy makeup in it or a lot of makeup. That was my favorite things. Like I loved uh, Jim the Holograms when I was little and they, you know, uber 80s glam. Loved it. I remember liking The Ultimate Warrior <laughs> in, uh, was it WW, WCW back then? Just because he had a lot of makeup on. I thought it looked so cool. And liking like Alice Cooper because he wore makeup and stuff like that. Like I was, I was an odd kid, to put it that way. Yeah, just immediately obsessed with makeup and high fashion and just the editorial side and just makeup artistry and then the subcultures within that of like drag makeup. I was just enamored with RuPaul when I was a kid. But yeah, that's, that's really how it all started was just being obsessed kind of with this, not necessarily pop culture, but a little bit of pop culture, but more like the subcultures within there and the makeup that went along with it. That was always what drew me in. I remember watching like Madonna and stuff and just thinking she's so glamorous and I was just so obsessed. <laughs> and this is Madonna when like erotica came out and express yourself and there was this, this really interesting movement in the world then of freedom and of expression and that's kind of, the, I just was very small when that was happening and I was just like awesome. This is amazing and I think that really is what uh, impacted my kind of, you know emotional development as I grew up I it kind of taught me to be very well it's like self-loving confident in who I am and who gives a shit what other people think kind of thing that's some that came from <laughs> playing in makeup and all that and the fascination was just seeing people be unapologetically themselves love themselves for who they were and I don't know that's always uh stuck with me <laughs> and I don't know if that answers the question though. I kind of went all a bit with hair. <laughs> a little off subject there, but yeah, I started playing makeup probably at age three. As, as soon as my little fingers could grab a hold of makeup, I started playing with makeup. Have you ever gone through any makeup phases you look back on and think, what the fuck was I doing? Oh yeah, <laughs> of course. Starting at the earliest point, I'm going to go ahead and get started on my transition though. I'm going to take the one and run this through my transition area with a fluffy brush uh definitely a lot of those go back to age 14 and trying to emulate christina aguilera and britney spears and all the girls that, you know they're popular at the time and i plucked most of my eyebrows out <laughs> i wore white eyeliner on the upper lid just and then black eyeliner just on the lower lash line, you know, just stuff I would never <laughs> do now. I'm just like, oh gosh, it's so bad. That was probably my low point in makeup was doing that and basically just plucking all my eyebrows out on the front <laughs> and they were like way over apart. And that is when I also learned how to use an eyebrow pencil. And at that time, eyebrow pencils were not great. It was just some little red ones from CoverGirl. That was basically all you had. Oh boy, do I remember that that struggle of trying to uh, fill them back in and realizing I made a mistake. And then like silly doll on me how dumb all these girls looked with their eyebrows plucked out. I was like, oh no, why did we do this? <laughs> like it clicked in my head then. I was like, this is not a good idea. Yeah, so that happened. I did go through that phase. I think we all did it if you're my age. Then later I shaved off most of my eyebrows and just had like this front part. I shaved them like to here and then drew these huge arches in because I was doing like uh goth vibes make you know 
I was doing very, very gothy makeup at the time in high school. Like, I think Susie and the Banshees style makeup. So I'd fully draw in a new brow, eyeshadow, everything just trad goth looking where you, you shave them all off, drawing completely new eyebrow shapes that don't exist. <laughs> That's, I was really into doing that in high school. And I think I went through a phase of just having really thin brows going for like a more retro Betty Page kind of vibe for a while. And then I started growing them out and overfilled them and used horrible shades that did not work because this was before the ABH brow products really came out. <laughs> I'm aging myself. So I was using some very um, my orthodox products to fill my brows in, like lip liner sometimes. I had like bright cherry red hair, so was, I would try to match that. It, it was it was not a good time for my brows. Like over plucked where they went. It, it was it was a thing, and it was not a good thing. It wasn't even in style at that point to do that. I was just being a weirdo, doing my own, living in my own little world there. Maybe wearing like pure white foundation. That was kind of a not my best look. In high school, I would do that. Full goth, like full classic old school goth makeup is what I did. And I would wear pure white foundation, gray contour, the works, and had the brows. <laughs> and I think, you know, now I still kind of do stuff like that, but in a, a different way. I try to make it more flattering, I guess. I mean, it's still fun to do, but this was like my everyday look going to 10th grade. <laughs> It, it was it was a lot. Okay, I'm gonna bounce over to the shade called Cheek to Cheek, and I'm gonna take a Sigma diffuse crease for that. And let's move on to our next little question here, which is: Have you ever been in a makeup rut where you did the same look for a long period of time? Yeah. Um, before I really got into before YouTube really got to be a thing, and before I started blogging and stuff, um, I got like two years there that I just wasn't doing a whole lot of makeup, and it was just basically fill my brows in with black eyeshadow to match my hair, because I, I had like blue-black hair, because goth vibes always, and uh, <laughs> I still had the thin brows then, <laughs> but I would fill them in with some black eyeshadow and throw on some mascara and that was literally it for I'd probably say about two years doing that and then after that I got kind of just stuck on wearing nothing but like green eyeshadow with some gold if I was going for like a glam look but I didn't really I guess I was not that I lost interest in makeup I just didn't do it that much or it was just very I don't know I didn't take the time to do it at that time I was just mmm bit of a mess then. Majority of the time it's just lip gloss, mascara, and brows. I, don't know, I had like kind of a renaissance of makeup after that. Fully got back into it and then started watching YouTubers and reading blogs and stuff and found this whole beauty community and just changed the game. I felt at home. <laughs> I don't know, this was before YouTube was very popular. I'm talking about like 10 plus years ago here. That was when I was in a makeup. This color is so pretty. This is definitely like some pillow talk vibes, huh? Next question is your first high-end purchase. I'm still using cheek to cheek here and building up the crease. My first high-end purchase was, it was three things at one go. It was Naked 2, Vice 2, and a Tarte gift set at Christmas that year. I, I don't remember what year that was. It was probably like 2012-ish. That was my first like legit high-end purchases. And it opened the floodgates. <laughs> That's what got me on my makeup rut was buying those high-end products, really, and got me into experimenting and trying new things again. Question number five, what have you repurchased the most? Let me move on to a different shade real quick. I'm gonna take How Rouge. Um, I think I'm gonna keep going with the same brush. I might flip it over. Let's go with the uh, medium sweeper here. What have I repurchased the most? Uh, I don't repurchase a lot of products because I like to try so many new products, <laughs> but I would say I repurchased elf brow pencils the most like the micro brow and just their what is it the brow lift pencil the white one that's like two dollars purchased that one over and over the wet and wild brow pencils basically any brow pencil that's been my most repurchased thing and uh setting sprays mostly the wet and wild uh, natural finish that's been one that i've repurchased quite often i'm just building up this uh hell Rouge shade on the outer corner here that's so pretty. This is just such a pretty palette. And question number six, what do your friends think of your makeup obsession? Well, for the most part, uh, they don't think of my makeup obsession. Some just don't have an opinion, I don't think, or they think I'm a little bit frivolous, a little silly sometimes. Uh, they don't realize, you know, 
what it is I do here, like making the videos and everything. Like they know I'm good at makeup, they like the makeup. I have other friends who fully like support it 100% and will even like go buy stuff for me for makeup. Like if they see something, they'll pick it up and they're like, ooh, you know, they'll remember something that I mentioned and they'll, you know, get it for me or, or you know, take my recommendations for themselves. That kind of, that do understand what's what I'm doing, you know? Some just, they just don't get it and that's fine. But yeah, some of my friends, they just, they think it's fantastic. They're all about it. And some are just kind of meh, whatever. But for the most part, they do support it and they think it's cool and like they'll come up with ideas for me. Even the ones that don't get that excited about the makeup aspect of it, they'll still be like, hey, this would be a cool video to do this. And it's surprising how many like my guy friends don't watch YouTube. They don't know about the beauty community or anything. They like, <laughs> kind of will keep up with me too though with my makeup and I think that's really cool. Like they'll follow me on Instagram and like when they see me in person they're like, I like that look he posted the other day. It's like that's really sweet. It's, it's surprising. It's surprising who does kind of pay attention and who doesn't. But for the most part all my friends support me and yeah and they all like encouraged me to do YouTube too. They knew I had a blog and you know would follow my Instagram and stuff but they're like, why don't you do YouTube? And I'm like, I don't want to do it. I don't like talking to people. Here I am, recording myself talking constantly and can't shut up in videos. I, this has been such a good outlet and I don't bother my friends as much about makeup and ramble to them about it because I ramble to you guys now. Lucky you. I'm gonna jump in with blush wine here, the darkest shade on the medium sweeper. And let's go on to question seven. What or who inspires the way you do your makeup? I would definitely say First would be music. That's kind of where I draw my inspiration these days. Music videos, the sound itself, I, I don't know. It just makes me see colors. And I, it does, It music really does inspire my makeup these days. I know it kind of abstract weird way <laughs> that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but when I listen to music and like the lyrics even, or just this, the melody, it just makes you see makeup. And, makes you see colors and you know how things could flow together and create a makeup look it's oddly like deep and weird but and aside from that i think video games culture like as well a lot of uh subcultures inspire my makeup uh mostly like cyberpunk has been like my, one of my favorite things lately that's been a big inspiration for the last couple of years in fact and you know the, the new video game coming out i've been like watching my husband play it <laughs> Yeah, you know, get a little inspired there. And that's that's really mostly where the inspiration comes from. It's just music. The music I listen to. Things when I get like copyright striked and all that. If that didn't exist and I could just put like the song that's in my head or that inspires the look in the video, I would. I try to find stuff in the free library that kinda has the vibe and I put that in the videos. But you know, I can only do so much. Alright, I'm just building up this blush wine shade on the outer corner. I'm going for soft today, some soft glam. Every now and then, um, though like a look someone else does, I think will inspire me. Uh, Jamie Genevieve, a lot of times her looks, I really, really am inspired by. Today's inspiration is actually just the lipstick, the Pillow Talk lipstick. That's my inspiration today. Sometimes it's just a lip color. You know, it's just something that kind of warms into my head. I'm gonna go onto the lid now. I think I'm gonna take uh, Enamored with my phalange here and just pat that on the, the lid. So pretty. That is such a pretty shimmer. And uh, next question, number eight is describe your current makeup style in three words. Soft gothic glam. Soft gothic glam. That's how I would describe it. Like soft glam, but with a bit of darkness thrown in. <laughs> Today we're just doing some soft glam and not really going too spooky with it. This is beautiful. Beautiful shimmer, look at that. Number nine, what pushed you to start your YouTube channel? Well, I would get a lot of comments on my blog of people asking me to do YouTube. It was never something I wanted to do. I think I was just too self-conscious to do it maybe. And now I've just gotten where I, I don't give a shit anymore. I was just way too shy, that's what it was. And uh, <laughs> so I, I would never do it. I was like, no, I don't have the equipment. I don't know how. And that was my other excuse was, I don't know how. I don't know how to edit videos. I don't know how to film. I don't know, I got a wild hair and started really thinking about it because people kept suggesting it in my, on my blog in the comments and you know, some of my real life friends were like, why don't you do it? And finally, I think I tweeted something about it like, should I just start doing YouTube? And Mallory 
Brooke, who she uh, she commented or something and told me go for it, do it. And Mallory's one of my favorite people on the platform, so I was just like, if Mallory says do it, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> So between her and I was really inspired by like people like Cora Diane, just seeing them, their content and everything, it made me think I could do that. And I don't know, it just, I finally, I guess it was kind of the evolution of vlogging was to do this. And I needed the creative outlet maybe in just this situation. I don't know. That's what did it was, she basically said, just do it. And I'm like, I am going to do it. And I did. <laughs> I, I started by, oh, I'm taking a pop-up bottle and just patting it in the center of the lid. This is a Super Shock shade in the palette. I started by doing little Instagram stories, like talking on there to get used to it, get over the initial fear. Because what would happen is I would turn the camera on to film and I would just freeze. I would freeze up and just panic, like stage fright. And so I started doing the Insta stories and kind of, you know, putting myself out there and it got easier and within like two weeks I was doing like little vlogs and stuff just to kind of experimenting and to kind of teach myself to edit I started like filming like little vloggy things and stuff and uh yeah I sit down learned watch tutorials on how to edit video and I got a premiere a subscription to Adobe Premiere and here we are <laughs> and I fell in absolutely in love with video editing that might be my favorite part I don't know, I might like that more than the sitting here filming. I, I love it all as a whole. The part that I enjoy least is the marketing aspect of Like the having to basically market yourself. I don't like that side of it. Yeah, I just kind of put my mind to it and was like, you know what, we need, you're not getting any younger here. <laughs> Let's take on a new challenge and go for it. Let's, you know, you only live once. What's the worst that can happen? Somebody tells you your eyes are crooked or you're fat, <laughs> you know? Nobody can say anything to me that I haven't said to myself, for one thing. And I've probably been way more cruel to myself than anyone could possibly be. So it's like, well, there's that. And who cares? I'm, I'm just going to do me and just do what I want to do. I'm not going to try to emulate, emulate anybody else's style. I just decided to start doing it. <laughs> well, a year and a half ago, and here we are. Fell in love with it. It's been so much, <laughs> so fulfilling, oddly. And, you know, gotten to meet new people and make new friends. Found this really awesome creative outlet that I needed. It's like, what did I do with myself before? Like, I don't know, like I feel like I didn't have anything really going on. I must have been really bored all the time <laughs> and just played a lot of video games. And uh, it's nice to have kind of a little bit of a purpose, I guess, and feel productive. Even if it is something as silly as makeup, <laughs> this has become such a, such a creative outlet and just a passion project, I guess you could say. Like I don't anticipate ever like hitting a hundred thousand subscribers or anything like that. This is just more for me and I enjoy it and I just want to keep the my content chill and just be like this. You know, we hang out, we drink a cup of coffee, we talk about makeup. We don't get too deep, we just talk about makeup and we escape the real world. That's what this is and that's what it's become for me, a way to just to escape and channel my energy into something productive. It gives, it's given me like a structure that I've needed. You know what I'm gonna do? Since we're doing a very Pillow Talk inspired vibe, I think I'm gonna take the Pillow Talk liner and I'm gonna use this on my upper lash line and do like a little wing. I feel like this would just be really pretty with this look. This is just such a Charlotte Tilbury vibe. Isn't that these colors? It's just uh, full on Pillow Talk vibes. So I'm just gonna do a little bit on the upper lash line here. This is one of my favorite eyeliners, by the way, is the Pillow Talk eyeliner from Charlotte Tilbury. The formula for one thing is just out of this world. It's one of the best eyeliner formulas I think I've ever used. <laughs> and I'm gonna wing it out just a touch. I think this has been one of the best little endeavors I've ever done. It's made me <laughs> so happy for some reason. And I know it's nothing major or anything like that, you know, it's just uh, putting makeup on on camera, but I found it incredibly rewarding and it has become something that makes me very happy. And I just wanna make content that makes me happy. I want <sighs> I want this to just be an escape for everyone where we can turn our brains off a little bit and just enjoy something simple as makeup and or organizing a drawer. You know, we all need an escape and this is my escape and I want it to be an escape for everyone else that wants to watch and I want to just be nice and chill. 
No negative vibes, you know? Make it a nice space for other people to come hang out with me, you know? You get what I'm saying? All right, now I'm gonna go do my face makeup and we'll come back for a lower lash line and some finishing touches. I'll see you in just a minute. I took a little Taco Bell break, a late night Taco Bell run. Lower lash line, let's go into cheek to cheek first on the medium sweeper. And I'm just gonna run that across. And let's take on a smaller brush here. Go with our little trusty Morphe 152. And I'm gonna go straight into blush wine on one side of the brush. This is one of those shades that has glitters in it that don't really do anything. What? I'm. I wish Color Pop would just stop with that. It's gonna tuck that right out there on the outer corner. And not that I don't have glitter everywhere as it is, I have gold glitter literally everywhere because of Christmas decorations. <laughs> and I'm gonna go back to that medium sweeper, clean it off, and take a little bit of the one. I'm just gonna use that to diffuse out under here and bring a little bit of warmth. Same brush, gonna take enamored and just run it right here. I love the glow this shade has. It's just a nice glow to it. I'm gonna bring it in the inner corner as well. A little bit of pop a bottle. So we use the center of the lid. Just right here. This is such a pretty shade. It's like an icy pink with a gold shift in it. And it's gorgeous. It'd be a beautiful face highlight. That is done. Spare you that unpleasantness on camera. I hate doing the waterline and I really hate watching people do the waterline. So we are done with the eyeshadow. Let's do a little mascara. I think I'm gonna use, I've been into doing the It Cosmetics Superhero topped with Lash Princess Curl or Volume. This one's not my favorite, but it works. Really good layered over superhero. I just uh, do face off camera, of course, cause that takes not like a long time, but it was just for the sake of time, I cut it out. <laughs> If that makes sense. It's just one of those things that to me is just kind of boring. It's, nothing really changes there and when I do film it's because I'm doing something different, you know what I mean? I think this one's about done. This mascara, shame, it's so good. It's probably my favorite mascaras, high-end ones. All right, now let's top it with Lash Princess Volume. I just don't like, really don't like the brush. <laughs> it's, I find it awkward. But I think it, it's a really good layering mascara. It's a weird shape brush that I don't think really does anything for volume, but look how much that adds when you layer it without getting too clumpy. Now I'm not a little clump, obviously, but I'm trying to use it because I don't want to waste. All right, let's move on to the cheeks and this last question. Last question is, do you think you will still be on YouTube in three years? Blush, I'm gonna go in with the e.l.f. Bite Size and Watermelon. But yeah, do I think I will still be on YouTube in three years? I sure shit hope so. I'm taking the highlighty side here first. And I'm gonna go use it as a highlighter. In the pan, it looks much deeper than it is. Like it actually is just a really nice highlighter. It just looks way more pigmented on the brush and on the pa in the pan. But it actually is just a pretty light sheen. But yeah, I sure as shit hope that I'm still here in three years. Oh, of course I would like my channel to grow in that time be nice but i am pretty content with you guys here and just doing what i love and playing and makeup i definitely do see myself continue to do youtube um once i pretty much commit something i'm pretty committed that's a really pretty highlighter nice i like this okay i'm going with the blushy side but yeah um even if you know the channel doesn't grow like crazy or something i'm still gonna do what i want to do and be over here just living my best little life, having fun, playing makeup. That is a lovely blush. I'm gonna have to pick up more of these for three dollars. Why not? Um, what I do want to see myself doing in three years here is just maybe some better lighting, upgrade a few things, that sort of thing. I would like to create more home content, more fashion content. I do want to kind of diversify things a little bit, have a little more creativity going in, not just here, do tutorials every day. You know, that's what I yeah, had this favorite thing to do is do a makeup tutorial. It really is. I enjoy those. I know they're not the most uh, exciting thing, you know, there's so many, but it's what I like to do. I like to just do makeup looks and show you how I do them. You know, I want to do more reviews, branch out just a little bit, improve my cinematography skills. <laughs> my videography skills would be nice. Move on to the lips which will be the star of the show because we're using Pillow Talk. Yeah, I just ordered Walk of No Shame lip kit. It's a full-size lipstick with the uh, liner. This is just a travel size. And I got my mother-in-law uh, 
both sizes of Pillow Talk and liner and lipstick. I almost got her one of the quads, but I wasn't sure she would like it. We had three years, so I sure hope we're living in a better world. A less scary world. We're just over here enjoying makeup and being happy. All right, and we are done with this look. All right, and we are finished. I'm gonna go fix my hair real quick and we'll be right back. Okay, and we are done with our makeup today and with the tag video of my makeup journey, how we got here, where we plan to go. <laughs> and yeah, I hope you enjoyed hanging out, having a cup of coffee with me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Stay safe and stay spooky, but now.